Okay, so now for uh, the like the super miracle in the video. And believe me, I'm skipping some steps, but watch the video because this is really amazing. So what he wanted to do was count the lattice points inside a circle of radius root n centered at zero. And he said that the number of lattice points is going to equal chi of 1, I'm just going to write x's because, plus chi of 2, chi of 1 plus chi of 2, the, all the factors of the numbers. Yeah. Okay? And then for 3, it'd be chi of 1 plus okay. chi of 2 plus chi of 3. For 4, it'd be chi of 1 chi plus of chi two. of 2. Oh, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. For chi of 3, my mistake. It's chi of 1 plus chi of 3. Chi of 1 plus chi of 3. For 4, chi of 1 plus, plus chi of 2. Chi of 4. What would it be for chi of 5? Chi of 1 plus chi of 5. Right. So how do you, what 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 went into this sum of all the chi's? Well, it's you, you the, will get all the factors of your number. So prime numbers will always have two factors. Prime numbers will always have two factors, just like I showed very clearly, right? Yeah. Super clear. And then the other numbers, you just write down the factors. So for, for the row, let's, let's say for 6, what, what are my factors of 6? So you have chi of 1, mm -hmm. chi of 2. 1, 2, and 3, and 6. And 2, 3, and 6. So amazingly, he was able to relate the number of lattice points inside of a circle of radius n, of root n, as the sum of all the chi's of all the numbers up to n. So he had this m sum that looked monstrously complicated. So he had 1, 2, 3, down to n, and then the sum, the chi's of the divisors. Looked really complicated. Mm -hmm. And he sorted it. I like. And we had to add all these chi's up, which is adding up a bunch of ones, yeah. zeros, and minus ones. Yeah. Right? And at first glance, it doesn't seem like there's any way to do this. Then he, kind, can, of, he kind of looked at it. In the columns. He, he looked what numbers had the chi of 2, what numbers had the chi of 3. Yeah. So looking at it first just as a big gigantic list, it didn't seem like there was any way we could add this up, but then all of a sudden... The columns. He looked at the columns. How many chi of 1's did we have? Well, all of them. Okay, so there would be about, about n chi of 1's. How many chi of 2's would we have? About half of the numbers. About half the numbers would be divisible by 2. How many 3's would we have? About a third. A third. How many 4's? Or, uh, uh, not fours. How many fives, since we're only looking at primes? About, so, about one-fifth of them. Sorry, I got confused. How many fours? There would be chi's of fours, because fours are divisors. So there's about a fourth. Etc. And then you just got rid of all the even numbers, because they don't do anything. Ah, the chi's of the even numbers are always what? They're always zero. Yeah, so they don't matter. So it just gets to chi, it just gets to the ones, the threes, the fives, and those just alternate positive and negative because of the chi function. All right, so when we're looking at a big circle of radius root n, how many, first of all, what was our first approximation for about, how, many, <clears throat> how many lattice points are in here? It's about pi. Um, N. So the number of lattice points is about pi times n. Why? Because it's it's about the area. It's about the the area of the circle. Area is pi r squared. Uh huh. Square root of n. Yeah. And we forgot one little thing here, but we'll come back to it in a second. And what we've set up to now is that this is approximately n plus uh, n times chi of one. plus n uh, 
chi of 1 plus uh, a half n over 2 times uh, chi of 2, but chi of 2 is 0. 0. Plus n over 3 times chi of 3. Plus n over 4 times chi of 4, but chi of 4 is 0. 0. zero. So plus n over 5 times chi of 5. Chi of 6 is 0. And then on forever. So we have this very interesting sum. And what's the thing we forgot? With the 4. Right, we forgot the 4 because we can always multiply our solutions by... 4 because of the rotations. Yeah, the rotations 1i minus 1i. So there's a 4 out here that we just forgot. That's okay. But now I can just cancel the n's and I and then divide by 4 and I can get pi over 4 equals chi of 1, which is... It's... It's... 1. 1. Plus chi of 3 over 3, but chi of 3 is minus 1. Plus one-fifth, minus one-seventh. So this is going to be pi over four, yeah. So this is pi over four? Cool. And what does it mean that this is pi over four? This what, what's he saying? Like, how, why can I write equals here? What does that equals mean? Well, that means, like... If you multiply this by four, you will get a sum for pi. And as you're getting... As you do this... If you do this sum out forever... Yeah. You just get closer and closer and closer to pi. As n gets larger and larger and larger, the approximation becomes better and better and better. So, that's pretty darn cool. It's neat. Like, that, this is a very hard topic. And uh, what do you think? Do you think Grant explained it pretty well? Yeah. 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 That shows a really cool side of math. And you got to see this chi function that didn't seem like it had all that, wasn't all that interesting. It turned out to be really powerful. Really, yeah. All right. Good work, guys.